I'm talking with Peter. Peter, where did you volunteer and what did you do? Well, I volunteered to go to Nepal and I was in the city of Kathmandu. Um, and being a, a retired journalist, I was recruited to help with the not so much the teaching of English, but the refinement of it. Most of the children out there learn English, but um, there's no form to it. It's, uh, and so it was getting conversational English as much as anything. What were the highlights of your trip, Peter? Well, it started on day one and continued for the entire period. Um, it was a wonderful time to grow up again um, but surrounded by children children who have got nothing that would give everything for example one little girl was six she was an orphan at the Samata school one day she asked me if I played marbles and I said no but I used to do and she went into her pocket and brought out a little glass marble and she said I've had this all my life six years old I want you to have it. Well, I felt I couldn't take this and she insisted and insisted. And fortunately, Utam, the man who runs the school and founded it, he said, please accept it. Not to accept a gift in Nepal is an insult. Well, I accepted it with tears rolling down my face and the little girl beaming away. Uh, I'll just to let you know, if there isn't the money in England could buy that marble. What were the greatest challenges of your stay? Not so much challenges um, as um, attempts to get through the, to a lot of the people who were permanent staff at the school that we were there to help, not to take over. Once we got through that, it was fine. Um, we were well received by everybody. So in fact, to say I had ch challenges it would be untrue. They were, it was just a question of sorting out the occasional problem. And what is the most important piece of advice you could give to potential volunteers? So try to listen to people who have been. Try to go there though with an open mind. Some people had said to me, oh, they'll be very difficult in the schools, but they weren't. Um, you would need, to, in Samata school, the one thing you need to go with is a lot of love that you're willing to leave behind for the children. When I left, there was a special event in the school grounds, and I was presented with a lemon scarf and by a little girl who was three who had adopted me as her granddad and that scarf represented all her love that she was giving to me to take home to England and by accepting it I was leaving all my love for her behind. You can't do this job without love. And that's the best advice I can give to anybody. Thank you. Why did you choose to go with people and places? Well, it really chose me. There was this, they were at the time involved with Saga and it was an advertisement in the Daily Telegraph. Would we like to, would we like to apply for a placement out there? And um, we applied and yes, we got it. Um, so really I didn't know people and places until we were far into the um, administrative period be before going. It was it, people and places were the people involved with Saga and that was it. But what I will say is that I found the organisation of people and places to be excellent. I was pleased that they listened because there was also a, an orphanage in the town where my friend went and helped and she rolled her sleeves up and had a real go 
at the bad organisation and the, yes, cruelty. Um, not intentional cruelty, but cruelty to the children. And she really got things sorted out with it. Um, and people in places listened to what we were saying. You can't wish for more than that. No. Thank you, Peter. It's a pleasure. Thanks for sharing the time with us. Thank you.